So thank you, and I really apologize to be the first in, the, in this week, meaning that you were swimming during one day and a half, and now you have to come back to physics. Uh, so I'm working at Université Paris-Saclay, at a university in the south of Paris, and the name of my team is uh, Matière-Molle aux Interfaces, which is pronounced in French M-E-M-O-I, and that means love me. <laughs> and Yeah, and, and <laughs> of course. And, 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 and To, to, to start with, um, we discussed with Didier Chatenay, uh, a, 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 a friend of mine, about why are schools in Carges so efficient. And he told me that, well, it's, uh, it's really schools in Carges are really efficient because, because people are asking questions. And said, well, why are they asking questions? And they said, well, when you have seen your teacher in the swimming suite, suit, then you will feel more comfortable asking questions. So here it is. <laughs> <laughs> So now, si since you have seen me in the swimming suit, really feel free to ask questions. Uh, well, what's, what are my interests in research? It's mainly interfaces. So we will deal with interfaces du during these two lectures. I've been working on polymerate interfaces, on polymerate interfaces and their influence on friction, about soap films, about uh, surface rheology, about wetting properties and texture surface and, and, and things like that. But so today we will mainly deal with soft matter in at interfaces, and in fact, we have not spoken that much about soft matter at interfaces up to now, and I really will start really slowly, and, 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 and that's the reason why there is no menu for my talks, in order that you don't see if I skip the dessert at the end. So there are many m motivations for studying soft matter at and, and, and interfaces, because you see that In soft matter, you can have problems with interfaces in a lot of places. Uh, here you see some, a picture that you have already seen with uh, uh, Matteo, where you peel a scotch tape. And well, if you, if you peel a scotch tape, of course, everything will be really uh, uh, affected by the rheology of the polymer and the way polymer deform under traction. But of course, it will strongly depend on what happened at the interfaces. And, and really understanding the coupling between a, a system and the interface is, is important. Of course, wetting properties are also important, and, and despite the fact that I wouldn't say that wetting is still, uh, uh, is still a, a real question, despite the fact that there are still some open questions, I s I'm sure that a lot of you are using wetting in order to characterize their interfaces. You are doing wetting tests. You want to, to know what are the surface energies of your surfaces, and one of the questions I want to deal with is, What can we learn from, from these waiting tests? Can we trust them? And that's, that will be, be part of, of my talk. And of course, there, there has been a lot on hydrodynamics of interfaces, and, uh, and I won't talk that much about that today, despite the fact that there are a, a huge amount of facts. Of course, you, you, you have also interfaces in forms and emulsion, and I think that Anke will speak about that. Not about emulsions? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, yes, but usually you don't, you, you, you don't take mayonnaise as, 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 as a dessert. <laughs> okay, so maybe you will have some emulsion but, and, and maybe not. So, well, there is a lot to do with interfaces, and, and, and of course, with two lectures, I won't be able to, 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 to do a lot of, of things, but I want to, to, to come back to the basics. Well, the basics is that. That's, that's the most simple experiment, and you have already seen this movie several times, I'm sure, but I want to start with that. The idea is you have a Petri dish, and in this Petri dish you have water plus soap. And on the top of that, you have a rectangle, and on this rectangle you make a soap film, and here you have a bar that can move on over it. So let's watch the movie and, and see what we can learn from it. So here, you, the film appears to be white, just due to the reflection of light. Now you see the bar better. And the movie is a little bit long. I have to think about it, but... Uh, and here, if you break the film on the right, what you see is that the bar goes from the right to the left, which means that there is a force related to the presence of the surface, and this force is the surface tension, and you know that. 
something that is really important that you that something that you, you that you see on this on this picture is that the force due to surface tension is the force which is in the plane of the interface. We'll come uh, we'll come back on that later, and 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 you could measure that the fo this force is proportional to the length of the bar. Well. If you want to, 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 to say that, so the f if you say that the force is proportional to the length of the bar, the factor of proportionality will be the surface tension, and there is a factor of two because on the soap films you, you have an upper surface and, and, a low and a lower surface. And if you want to, 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 to say that, you will say that the surface tension, the classical unity of surface tension, will be a Newton per meter. Another way of thinking about surface tension is, is, is if you think in terms of energy, and I will try to work as much as I can with energy, and the idea is that if you know, imagine that you have a slightly a small move of this bar, and if you have a small sm move of this bar, it will, the, the surface tension will exert a, exert a force, which will be the force times the displacement. And if you, if you do this force times the displacement, and you say that this force is proportional to the length, at the end you will say that the work will be the surface tension times the change in area of this soap film. So if you think about that, then the surface tension is no a work divided by area, and then his, his natural unit will be joule per, per square meter. And indeed, if you do this work with a constant volume and a constant temperature, the chemical potential which is associated to that will be, will be the free energy. So the surface tension for liquid is the derivative of the free energy with respect to the area at temperature and uh, at fixed temperature and, 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 and volume fixed. Okay. And of course, you can do exactly the same if you worked at fixed temperature and fixed pressure, and then the surface tension will be the derivative of the Gibbs free energy, dg over dA. So it's what it, it's what it is. Yes. Just because, I mean, here, uh, uh, what we have here is, is a soap film. So you have a, a, a surface on the top and a surface on, uh, uh, below. So there is a force on the, so the, on, on the bar, there is a, a force exerted by the upper surface and a force exerted by the lower surface. Okay? Well, and what is the order of magnitude of this quantity? So the order of magnitude of this quantity, you can have it just think, thinking that if you have a liquid hair, what you have to do is to break bond bonds when you, when you take a molecule which is in the bulk and you put it at the surface. Okay? That's kind of the easiest way of, of derivative the origin of the, of, of, of the surface tension or, or surface energy. So the idea is, well, there is an attractive force between, there is an attractive energy between this molecule and the, o the, o the other. So if you go from here to here, you mainly kill uh, three bonds. And then if you, if you calculate the number of molecules at the interface and the number of bonds that you have to break to make a, a molecule going from the bulk to the surface, you will have the surface tension. So at the end, the surface tension will be the energy between the molecules, so the, 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 uh, the energy which links the molecule, divided by the area of the molecule. And since I'm working with soft matter physics, I, I forget the pi and so on. And, and since my, my model is really, really, really nasty, I think it's, it's much enough. Well, here, contrary to what we have seen before, where, where we say that, surf that polymer physics was mainly dominated by entropy, what I'm claiming here is that surface tension is completely dominated by enthalpy. We break bonds all the time. Okay? And if we want to, to have this order of magnitude, well, we can have an idea of what is the stiffness of these interactions simply by knowing the, the enthalpy of bonds breaking, can be van der Waals and so on. And if we want to have an idea of the size of the molecule, we can either do X-rays diffraction or you can simply take the, 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 the molecular, uh, the density of the liquid and you will have an idea of the size of this molecule. And it, it works pretty well and, 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 and if you say, well, that these, you, you, you take these enthalpies, the number of molecules, the area of the, the sorry, the, the, the area of this molecule and so on, and then it will give you orders of magnitude and it will tell you that for van der Waals liquids, like, uh, I don't know, dodecane, decane, octane and so on, the surface tension, the surface energy will be of the order of 20 millijoule per, per, per square meter. Well, if you go to metallic liquids, then the, the bonds that you have to break are much higher, so the energy required to break bonds is much higher, and if you go, if you go to, to the surface tension of mercury, you will have something like 500 millijoules per, per, per square meter. And 
with edge bonding, like water, you will have something like 80 met, met, millijoules per square meter, and indeed at room temperature, just keeps this order of magnitude in mind. The, 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 the surface free energy of water is 72 uh, millijoules per square meter. So I'm sure that you have all, or, all already seen this introduction of surface tension. But let's go a little bit deeper of what is surface tension, and, go, and, and, and let's tr try to go back to mechanics. But what, what are the forces? What are the forces on an interface? And if we want to go to that, we can, we can look at what, what are the stress, both in the bulk phase, in the, in the gas phase, the bulk phase, and at the interface. Well, as you have seen, I mean, on the upper phase, you have a, you have a gas. So if you want to know what the stress, the stress is mainly the pressure. So that's an isotropic tensor, tensor with the pressure, which is the, the, the gas pressure everywhere. If you go in the liquid, well, it should be the same. I mean, here, because if, you, if I want a, 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 a layer of liquid to be at equilibrium, I have to have the pressure the same below and, and, and the upper. The question is, what's the force in the, in the horizontal direction? And if we look carefully what at the interface, it becomes more difficult. I mean, in the z direction, the stress, the stress component should be the same. The pressure should be, should be the, the, the vertical component of the stress should be the same if we go from the gas phase to the, to the liquid phase. Whereas nothing tells us that in the horizontal direction, in the direction of the interface, nothing tells us that the, in, that the pressure or the stress should be the same. It's not completely, completely obvious, but, but we have to think about that. And the difference between the stress in the horizontal, in the vertical direction, and the stress in the in the in the horizontal di direction is responsible of the surface tension. And how can we calculate that? Well, I will skip the, the, the details of the calculation, but just explain what we can do if we want to understand that. Let's imagine that we take a box, a square box at the interface here, and we we squeeze this box a little bit. Okay. In this direction, the, the box will be, it was initially L, and now it's L minus, D, L, D, L minus delta L. And if, we, if I want to, to keep the volume of this box constant, and I do that in 1D, I will have to increase this area by delta L. So now I can calculate the work it requires to, in, to change the, 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 this, 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 this cubic box to a paraplipidic box. So, there are some pressure terms here. So I push here in the normal direction. So the, the pressure will be P naught, the pressure applying here times the area of this box, which is L square, times the displacement, which is delta L. And it's a positive quantity because I push on the, I push on the box in this direction. And well, I have also to take care of the displacement in this direction. And in the, di in the displacement in this direction is a little bit harder because the perpendicular pressure here, as I said, should depend on z. So I have to calculate a little bit. I, so I have to integrate. It's the same, the same thing. So that's the perpendicular pressure integrating over this side times the area, times the, 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 the length in the perpendicular direction, and times the displacement. And now it's a negative term, just because the, uh, the, I, I, I go on the direction which is opposite to, to, to the movement. So I have a minus sign here. If I do all the maths here, which is not that difficult, but if I do that, at the end, I will say that this work will be the integral over this box of the difference between the pressure, the pressure in the normal direction minus the pressure in the plane. So that is work. Yes? I mean, there, there is. I mean, there is no reason for, for for which it could be the same. I mean, I mean, in this direction, I know that the pressure should be the same just by, by for mechanical reasons. I, I'm just thinking in terms of mechanics here. But whereas in in this direction, nothing so t tells me that it could be, it it, sh it will be the same. I will come back on that later. But uh, but from a, from from a more molecular point of view, if if, if you want, but. At least, at least this calculation tells me that it shouldn't be the same. And why it, should, it shouldn't be the same? Just because now this work, if I, divi if I divide this work by the area of this box, 
so which is which is uh, uh, um, delta a, okay, which with, with the change of, of area, this work should be the surface tension. So this the integral of the difference of pressure over the interface should be the surface tension. And now I have integrated over the whole box. I have, uh, I have made L tends to infinity to, 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 to have this. But this tells us something really interesting. This tells us that since gamma is positive, it means that P0 minus P perpendicular is positive. Which means that the interface here in this direction does not feel the same pressure tha than in this direction, and there is a tension at, at the interface. Okay? That's what this equation tells us. There is a tension at the interface. There is the, the stress in this direction is not the same as the stress in, in this direction. And what is, this what is the amplitude of this difference of stress? Is that an important effect, or is that just a small effect? Well, we can put orders of magnitude. If we say that, well, we do not expect the, I mean, what is the thickness of the area where the pressure is not is isotropic? It's probably not one meter. So if we if we assume that the thickness of of, the, of this area is around one nanometer, let's say, and we can we'll see later how we can calculate the, the density profile close to an interface. If we say that this is that that the, that the, the pressure difference difference act on something like one nanometer then we can calculate the order of magnitude of this difference of pressure and it will, it will give us something like 200 atmospheres. That's a lot. It really tells that the stress, that the really the interfaces are under stress. Okay? Well, we know gamma is positive just because from experimental point of view, but also from stability point of view. If we have a, a negative surface tension, it, it means that if we have a, a, a system, it will spontaneously uh, uh, split in a lot of, 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 of small parts in order to, to increase the, the, the surface area. So it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't go down to zero, but probably not be, being positive. The negative, sorry. Well... All what I've done so far is, is true for a flat interface. I, I will not go that much in the details of the equation here, but we can do exactly the same kind of calculation of, the, uh, of a curved surface. And now, of, on a curved surface, the only things we we, we, that we ch will change is that nothing tells us, tells us that the pressure should be homogeneous in the direction perpendicular to the surface. Because now there is a breaking of symmetry due to the curvature. So we can we can do the same kind of calculation, but now we have to add an equilibrium condition, which tells us that, that there, sh the, th there is a difference of pressure in this direction and in this direction, which is compensated by the fact that now the, perp the, the, the perpendicular pressure acts not in the plane of the interface, but with a certain angle. And if we do all these, I, I, I skip all the calculation, the only thing that we get from this calculation is that with this description of continuous pressure, continuous stress at the interface, there will be a difference of pressure between the interior part of an interface and an exterior part that will be given by the Laplace law. So the, 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 the pressure inside, the pressure, sorry, the pressure inside will be larger by the, than the pressure outside by a factor of gamma r, just because here I have assumed a curvature only in this direction. And if I assume a more complex geometry of the interface, I have the well-known Laplace law, which relates the difference of pressure between the interior and the exterior of a surface with a constant curvature. Any question on that? Yes. Yeah, sure. Oops, sorry. Well, if, if, if that's, that's the stress tensor. I mean, we are only dealing with the stress tensor inside the liquid, so which, which tells us, let's go in the liquid phase. If I, take, if I take a cube here, 
I will have a, a force p not, p not, p not, p not. That's the, I mean, it it's that the force exerted by the outside from the inside. So here, if I go at the interface, I will have p, p not, p not, p perp, p perp here. It, it, it means that the, pr the pressure here is larger than the pressure here, which, which means that at the end, I mean, if the pressure here is, lar is larger than the pressure here, it, it tells that it, pull on the it pulls here on the, on, 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 on the interface. Okay? Well, and, and of course there are a bunch of applications of the Laplace law that I want to discuss today. I mean, you have the shape of, 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 of a catenoid, which is the shape of a bubble in between two circles. You have the physics of Sandcastle, which is completely dominated by, by Laplace law. You have the fact that, well, if you have a jet, you have the Rayleigh plateau instability. If you have a jet of liquid, it will split in several droplets. Um, you have the coarsening of, of a foam here. You have some picture of my group of people who have studied the, 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 the foams in the ISS, in the Interna International Space Station, when they want to understand the coarsening and how, how foams involves in the absence of gravity, and, and so on. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of applications of the Laplace law, and I, I won't talk about Laplace law too much today. Well. But I would like to discuss a little bit more about something that we discussed already, and I will come back. It's the direction of the, of, of, of the surface tension. Because that's something that you have already... I mean, I've tried to be as precise as possible in my explanation, but maybe I was not. So the idea is that, well, another way of introducing the surface tension, I've mainly spoken about energy. And I could, I could have spoken about forces. And if I speak in terms of forces, I would say that, well, if I have a molecule here at the, uh, in the bulk, she's attracted by a force due to, let's say, six molecules around. If I put a molecule here on the top, this molecule is attracted by a lower number of molecules, let's say three, which makes that the surface tension is a force which is Downwards. And we just say that the force is in the plane. What is wrong here? Exactly. But that is more, it's more, let's say, the, the, the answer here was. There should, there should be a force balancing it, because if not, there, the f the, 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 there will be a movement. But it's, it, it, it my question is more, what is what here in this treatment is, is, is wrong? Yes? Well, for this molecule here on the top, she do, I mean, this molecule doesn't feel the solid. Yes? Well, buoyancy, maybe, it's, maybe you're right. Maybe I, I wouldn't have called that buoyancy, but maybe I, it's, it's something like that. The point is that, let's try to be a little bit more precise. The point is that when I look at the molecule at the interface, it should be more or less at equilibrium. If I look, if I, if I look at the, poten the intermolecular potential between two atoms, there is an attractive part, but there is also a repulsive part at short range. And what fixes the position, the average position between two atoms, is the fact that, in average, the attractive force is counterbalanced by the attractive force. So maybe you could, could quote that buoyancy, but in average, there is not a neat force in, in, in either direction for the, for, the, for the molecule. Okay. So if you term it, but indeed, if you want to remove this part, these molecules from its e equilibrium position to infinity, you have to pay an energy, so which means that the, 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 the understanding of surface tension of in terms of energy is correct, whereas the understanding of surface tension in terms of 
forces is wrong, just because molecules at, at, are, at equilibri are at equilibrium in average. Okay? But something really important is, well, we still have to understand why there is this kind of difference between the normal stress and the perpendicular stress here in the liquid. I mean, here it's still something which is not completely obvious. And something really important, as you already noticed, is the fact that we have to take into account the fact that the density profile close to inter the interface is not a step. We have a dense liquid here, a gaze here, and an interface zone where the density should slowly go from something which is in the liquid and something in the gas. Here you have data from numerical simulation. Yes? N no. No. Curvature is not... I mean, sorry for, for this drawing, but I, I'm, I'm just saying that the fact that we have to go continuously from a liquid to a gas, we cannot go in one step, is important. And I, want, I, I just want to prove you that by, by, by a small calculation. And so here, the, the calculation is how can we calculate the density profile close to an interface. And we can do that if we come back to, to what, what is a fluid and if we, 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 and, and if we treat everything. So just for, for, for Professor Grossberg, I wrote again the, the Planck constant here. <laughs> and, 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 and the idea is, wh what, I what, is the party wh what is the free energy of a, of a liquid? And I, here, I chosen the simplest liquid that I can imagine, a van der Waals liquid. So here, I, I, I've just re re recalled the ideal, ga the ideal gas uh, uh, partition function which introduce, well, you have to introduce the, the Planck constant. And if I want to, uh, and this gives me the free energy of the ideal gas. And if I, if, if I, if, if I write the, the free energy of the van der Waals gas, if you have any question, I can discuss that later. The only thing to do from the, if I go from the ideal gas to the van der Waals fluid is to add an excluded volume terms here and to add a term which is proportional to the density to the square, which is a characteristic of the pair interactions, as you have seen several times in the flurry against discussion. Okay? So that's the, the free energy per volume unit in a van der Waals fluid. And if you, if you write it, if you write it, so you can discuss, you can write it in several times, and if you write it, you will see that the shape of the free energy per, per, volume, per volume as a function of the density is something like that. And now, I've already written the response, but you know what happens when the free energy is something like that. The convexity of the curve sh goes from one side to another one, which means that there is a phase transition. S the, sh the, sh the change is in, 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 in convexity shows you that there is a phase tra transition, so and then you can you can use the double, the, the, the double tangent construction already shown by Professor McLeish, and you see that you have two phases here. One phase is at low density, which is the gas phase, and one phase is at large density, which is the liquid phase. And so you cannot have a fluid, fluid with a density in between these, except in, in, in metastable state, and there will be a, a phase separation. And again, you know from previous lectures that the slope of this curve here is a chemical potential. That's simply the derivative of the free energy with respect to the, to the density, so that's the chemical potential. So from that, you can calculate the free energy of the systems that we have just shown be before. Well, that's nasty calculation, but anyway, the free energy of the system will be the integral of the density over the whole system. So it's what it is. And here, what we will be able to say is, is to say, well, and that's something that we, which is really important, is the idea that surface free energy or surface tension is an excess quantity. What we will say here is that basically, we could imagine that the system will be a completely bulky liquid and a completely gaseous system and something in between. So we'll say, well, uh, it will be from the infinity to the position of the interface 
the free energy of the liquid, from the position of the interface to infinity, the density of the gas. But here, I made a mistake because the density in this area is neither the density of the liquid of the gas, so there is a correction, and this correction I can calculate here, it, and it is the excess free energy due to the fact that there is an area whereas the energy is neither the one of the gas or the one of the liquid. Yes? Z star is, is, is a position. That's, it's not the same question, but I, I will answer to the second question. What says Z star? I don't know. I mean, he, here's, that, here's that's kind of an issue of this, of this, na this description where I put arbitrarily the position of the interface. Okay? I've said that there is a position of the interface, but I don't know where it is. Yes? What? What is... F ah, sorry. Here you, here you say that in the free density, I can define the density of the, the... the free energy of the liquid, the free energy of the gas, the density of the gas, the density of the liquid from this constriction going from this equation of state. And here I have that. And I will answer to your question right now. So now I do some math. I, I because now I skip all the calculation, but I know the equation of this, this line here, so I can, introduce, uh, I can introduce the equation of this line. And I will say that the surface tension is simply this excess term. Because here, it will be the energy of what will be a, li a liquid. Here, the, the free energy of what will be a gas. So the, 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 the surface tension is this excess term. I do all the math. And at the end, where it is, yeah. The free energy is the sum over the whole profile of the free energy minus, that's the equation of the, the double tangent that I showed be before, integrated over the profile, plus mu times a surface excess. And the surface excess is simply, here, the difference in density between the number, I mean, the surface excess is mainly this area minus this area. So that's the number of particles that come from the fact that I have put the, the, the Gibbs plane some, somewhere here. So, how can I choose the Gibbs plane? I will say that the excess quantity here is equal to zero. I just I just assume that, well, I choose the position on this line in order that I have the same number of, of, of molecules in the upper part than on the lower part. Yes? I mean, here, here in this description, it should be, uh, 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 it looks like an hypothetical uh, 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 origin. If I would have put gravity in, this in the mass, I, I would have been able to choose that there is a uni unique position of the Gibbs plane. But here it, it looks more like a, 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 a trick in order to, to find where the position of the interface is. The only thing that I can do anyway is that, well, gamma, gamma is a physical quantity. I can measure the surface free energy here. It's kind of reasonable to say that the free energy is something like that. And well, of course, the position of the Gibbs plane will change the, 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 this quantity here, which is kind of a, a, a problem. So that's the reason why it looks like not really physical. But if I put the gravity, I can get rid of this problem here. OK, but the idea here is that the surface tension now, I've 
pre presented before the surface tension as a difference of a difference of stress, and now I present the surface tension as a difference of free energy with respect to two phases. And well, the point is now I have to I want to know what I want to calculate. What I why the reason why I've done this calculation is what I want to know is the density profile. So I want to know how the density moves when I go across the interface, and the density moves when I go across the interface. To find that, I have to minimize this surface free energy. And it's a functional, because the, then the surface tension that I have calculated depends on the whole profile of the, of the density at the interface. And the question is, what is the solution? I mean, since I was really fast, I will don't let you that much time, but a really easy solution will be Let's take here, or here. Yeah, let's take. Let's go here. If I take a solution where the density profile is something homogeneous up to the Gibbs plane, and then I make a step, and then homogeneous from the Gibbs plane to the infinity, then f minus f t in all this area will be zero. F minus Ft in all this area will be zero. And I have a zero surface tension. And that's the minimal free energy of the interface. So here I show that so if we have a density profile which is a stepwise, then there is no surface free energy. So it comes back to what we have said before. We need a continuous interface in order to be able to have, an, uh, to, 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 to have a surface tension. If there is no profile, then there is no surface tension. That's really important. So then, how we can solve it by math? So the, the we, we, ca we can solve it by math by adding a non-local term in the free energy. And the way to say that is we, 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 we add a, 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 an extra term which is proportional to the change in density close to, 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 close to the interface. That's a gradient term. Okay. And from that, you can do all the math and find the whole density profile close to the interface. But you really need, you really need to, add, to add this term in order to have a non-zero surface tension at, at, at a liquid interface. It's not a mass. It's a, it's it's a it's a co it's a coefficient times a gradient square. And well, I I I do that fast. But the idea is that we have we we have to add a term, which is proportional to we we don't want we don't want a step. Let's let's do it slowly. We don't want a step. So if we don't want a step, we 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 have to add an extra cost of the change in density at the interface. So we have to, to add an ex we, we do an expansion in, 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 in terms of gradient of the density at the interface. A term which will be simply proportional to the gradient is not acceptable due to the symmetry of the problem, so it has to be proportional to the square of the gradient of the density at the interface. OK. Yes. I'm not sure to understand your question. I, I would say that here I have the density of a gas, here, far from the interface, which is uh, one gram per, per liter uh, in terms of mass. Here, far from the interface, I will have a density of one kilogram per, li per liter if it's water. And here, in this intermediate region, which is, I mean, if I do this calculation, I will be able to show that it will be nanometric, except close to the triple points. Uh, here in this area, the density is continuously going from, from the, the one of the liquid to the one of the gas. 
So the density here is not equal to zero, that's the one of the gas. Yes? The, yes, this is interface is nanometric, except close to the triple point. Okay? So let. At, 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 at the liquid air interface, the, the, there are not that many oscillations. At the, because to, to have this kind of solid, blah, 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 to have this kind of oscillation, it's more when there is a solid interface which allows the, the, the system to crystallize. But, but usually wi with, with gas, I mean here, the, 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 and simple liquids, there are so no It's yeah. It's 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 really it's really smooth, yes. Well and then and then I come back to yes. Oh yes, you're right. I I, I I'm just keeping the, 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 the I, I take the lowest term that allows me to, 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 to make a cost of at a at a step. But uh, of course, I, I could make an expansion with with a power uh, with a power of four, six, and so on. You're right. Well, and then come back to the to the to, to the question that that that, 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 have, that have been asked before about uh, uh, um, the, the the direction of the force. So the question is: Well, we come back we, we come back to this idea of. What are the forces exerted on the molecule, and why are these why are these forces responsible to a force which is in the plane? So here it, it is this nice paper, which is kind of pedagogical by Antonin Marchand in the uh, American Journal of Physics, and I, I, I will try to 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 to, to present his, his 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 proposition in order to understand with hand the the uh, the, the, the the direction of the surface tension. And basically, the idea that I should have mentioned earlier is that. In the molecule molecule interaction in a liquid, the attractive part is long range, whereas the repulsive part is short range. And this has a consequence about the fact that the repulsive part of the pressure in the fluid should be isotropic, whereas the long range part of the pressure in the fluid could be anisotropic because it will be sensitive to the presence of an interface. That's the idea below the, the, the origin of the surface tension. So, well, then, 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 then this proposition. Let's imagine that the system is the part of the liquid which is below this line. Well, if I, if I, if I take the liquid below this line, it, is, it, it will fill two parts, an attraction due to the upper liquid and a repulsion of the, due to the, to, to the, to the, lo to the lower liquid. And if I go deeper and deeper, since the upper part is increasing, since the pressure should be, should be homogeneous in this direction, then the repulsive part should also increase. So when I, when I go deeper and deeper, the attractive part due to the long range, pa long, long range part of the, of the pressure increases, the repulsive part should increase of the same quantity due to the fact that the pressure is, is homogeneous. Okay. But now imagine the, 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 that we cut the surface in two parts, left and right. If I take left and right, then I say that the repulsive part should be isotropic. So the repulsive part, which is in black here, increases. Okay, that's the same than here. That is isotropic. Whereas the attractive part shouldn't change. Because in this direction, from here to, to here, you see the same, the same thing. So if you make a balance, you see that there is a net attractive part in this direction. Yes? No. Since the beginning, there, there, there is no gravity, because if there is gravity, then I shouldn't say that the pressure is homogeneous w when we go in the perpendicular direction. Why, why, why does... Why, why does I mean, the attractive part is the integral of the interaction between this part of the liquid and the upper part. And there is more and more liquid above to attract. 
So the attractive part increases when I go from here to here. So the attractive part should increase. <laughs> that, I mean, let's spend some time here because I think that this idea is, I mean, it's completely not, not intuitive. Then I, I'm looking, so he, here you understood. I say that the attractive part have to increase. Then the repulsive part have to increase of the same quantity just because the pressure is constant. Now, if I go in this direction here, what I say is that the attractive part should be the same everywhere because there is the same quantity of liquid here. That if I integrate all the, the interaction of the molecules in the perpendicular direction from here to here to here, that's the same number of molecules. So the attractive part is the same here. And the repulsive part, what I say is that, well, since the repulsive part of the pressure is isotropic, I can look how the repulsive part of the pressure evolves when I go deeper and deeper. And here I see that the repulsive part of the pressure should increase when I go depth. So the repulsive part should increase. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Th there is more and more repulsion, and then it makes that there is a net force in this direction. Yes. Yes. Yes, what I want to do here is, yes, I want to, 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 because I have said that there is a gradient of density with the math. I've s uh, uh, and now I, I, have se I, I have seen with the math that there is a difference in stress in the perpendicular and horizontal direction. And now I try to, 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 to figure out why there is this difference in, in pressure in this horizontal and, 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 and vertical direction. Coming back to intermolecular potential with, with, within atoms and saying that, well, the, the attraction part is isotropic, whereas the, the, repulsive sorry, the repulsive part is isotropic, whereas the attractive part couldn't be, could be not isotropic. Yes. Well, uh, yeah, what, I, what I do at the, yeah, the, su the surface tension is the integral of the stress over the interface. So, so of, of course, you're right, there, sh there will be a, 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 a small change in the horizontal stress when I go deeper and deeper in the liquid, but what I call the surface tension is the sum of all that. Okay. Yes. Uh, in a hard sphere system, I think that there is no surface tension. I have to think about it. But uh, well, I mean, well, maybe you uh, maybe you can correct me. But as is, uh, if I trust what I uh, uh, if, if I trust what I say here, I would say that there won't be any surface tension. And 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 and. I trust that, no, sorry, I, I should have sucked a little bit about that, for two reasons, because first of all, if I, if, I, if I have only art sphere, then I have no attraction, and from the very naive description of surface tension at the beginning, I have to, to get attraction between the molecules in order to have surface tension. And here, from the more elaborate vision, I have to have this difference between the repulsive part, the shape of the repulsive part and the attractive part in order to, 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 to get surface tension. Yes. Yeah. 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 It will. It. It. it, it again. It's. It's. It, we are talking about couple of molecular lengths. 
diameters. Exactly. I mean, surface tension, I mean, surface tension is really a surface properties, whereas gravity is a bulk property, so the effect of gravity is, is, is neglectable on surface tension. I mean, it's, it will affect the shape of objects, but not, not, nothing more than that. Oh, another question in the back. And You want me to add the solid? Let's do that later. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, because if we add the solid, it's, it's much more difficult. Uh, yeah, let's try. And after that, I will try to to <laughs> to do some scales. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, what I'm s yes, you're right. Y what I'm saying is that surface tension is really small. I mean, is is really small scale. And if I if 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 I go around 100 nanometers, where, where is wh which is a range of the van der Waals interaction, then I, I, I will I will don't feel anything. Okay. So I think that I will skip the part. Yes. Very short range attraction. Um, yeah, yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my 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 n wavy explanation will not work, but I as hmm? but but sti surface tension is still still there. You're right. But anyway, if if I. You want something like that? Yeah, but here I would say that the I mean I would say that the range of the repulsion is, is zero, whereas the range of the attraction is not zero. Well, I, 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 since I want to, s to talk about several s stuff, I also wanted to speak a little bit about surfactants, whereas I, 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 will, I, I will skip all the details of the maths, but I, I want to, to take some time to discuss some, some, s some small effects on of surface tensions. Um, well, here, has a, here is a situation where you put some... some C tab, which is a common surfactant, a cat cationic surfactant, in water. Okay? And you measure the surface tension. And the surface tension, you measure it with different tabs of different legs. So let's take only one. Let's take the, 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 the C16. And what you see is that the surface tension decreases when you add the surfactant. And here we are in a lean log plot. That's important. And after reaching a certain concentration, we reach a plateau. So I'm sure that you are all have measured this. But I want to put, to, 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 to put your attention on some, some points that I, that I will emphasize here. So what is this point? What is the, the point where the surface tension stops to decrease and we reach a plateau? So I've heard two things. You said all the surface is covered. It's what you said. And here I've heard CMC. What's, what is CMC? I will come back to that. Other In the concentration, the micelles are formed. OK, so th this is CMC. And you said... The it is a saturation of the interface. The problem is here. So, what is a CMC? 
The CMC is the concentration at which we will form micelles. So the idea is we, we, have a, we, we have water, we have some surfactant in, 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 the, in the solution. So due to entropy, they mix. Due to the fact that surfactants have a tail which is hydrophobic and a head which is hydrophilic, they prefer to stay at the interface that's in the bulk. But still, they go a little bit in the bulk. We'll see when they go on the curve. And then we have this point where we, we, where we, we, we that's the concentration, where we say that the, the micelles forms. But then there is a problem. There, there is a problem if we use the, defini the definition of the CMC that some of you used. That's the reason why I, I, I wanted to spend some time on this slide and skip all the math. The point is that we call that a critical micellar concentration. That's a bulk properties. It's the number of molecules per volume. If, it's it if it will be the concentration at which the surface is filled by surfactant, that it, would be it won't be co counted as a number of molecules per, per volume, but instead of that, it will be a number of molecules per area. So really, this point doesn't correspond to the point, point where the surface is filled with surfactant. So no, what is CMC? The c what is the critical, critical micellar concentration? The critical micellar concentration is a competition between two effects. The effect is entropy that we already dis discussed. Molecules want to be dissolved in the bulk. And enthalpy, these molecules, they don't like to be like that. They would prefer to be in a micelle. So they will prefer to put their tail together and then, then they head at the outside. Well, entropy is a bulk property. Enthalpy is a bulk property. It really depends on the number of molecules. And at the end, the CMC is, a is really a concentration. It doesn't matter the size of, of the beaker you use to measure your concentration. But here, I mean, of course I will scope. I will skip all the, the de details, but there is this Gibbs equation. This Gibbs equation relates the number of molecules at the interface, where the excess molecule at the interface with respect to the concentration of this molecule and the change in surface tension. You will have all my slides and the derivation of this equation. But you can relate the changes in surface tension of a solution with polymer to the concentration of surfactants, and it will allow you to calculate the number of molecules at the interface. And this equation tells you that is, if the derivative of the surface tension with respect to the concentration, with, with respect to the logarithm of the concentration, is constant, then the surface excess or the number of molecules per surface area is a constant. Which means that here, you had already a line. So it tells us that in this region here, the surface was already filled by surfactant when you trace this, this curve in, 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 in inlock plot. Okay? And here, that's something completely different that happens, which is the, micellar, the critical micellar concentration. And it also tells us something which is really, really not intuitive, which is the fact that the surface tension goes on changing here, whereas the surface is filled. So the surface tension does, is not constant here just because the surface is already filled by surfactant. It's something else which happens, which is the, uh, the apparition of these micelles. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Any comment on that? Questions? I think that this is really important. Yes. If I in yeah exactly, and this point will I mean, and I've never seen careful measurement of of this region with respect to the size of the of the beaker. But as you said, probably this should 
I mean, this shouldn't depend on the size of the beaker, but probably here it, it, it will depend a little bit. It is, I mean, that... Uh, oh, yes, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're. But, but, I mean, really, you're right. So, really, you, you have to think in mind that we, we, we have really fi already filled the... the, 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 the Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, with that. So ne now, I will ask a question for you. Why do we need to put surfactants in order to make bubbles? Stabilize the interface? Wait, why does that stabilize the interface? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> saying that you will, will, put, you will put soap that it will stabilize the interface is kind of saying, I mean, kind of saying the same thing. Yeah. Thanks. Just look at the values here. Surface tension of CTAB solution is around 38. Surface tension of alkanes, we say that the really beginning of my talk that it was around 20. So surface tension of alkanes is lower than the surface tension of soapy water. Can you make bubbles with dodecane? No. You cannot. So there is something more here to understand. Putting soap in water does not only decrease the surface tension. It's not the only mechanism that we have to take into account if we want to understand the stabilization of bubbles. And of course, the stabilization of bubbles is kind of, it's what I will talk today for the, for the outreach talk, but Stabilization of interface is not only important if you want to make bubbles, it's also important if you want to make emulsions of foams. So the mechanism cannot be simply the decrease of the surface tension in average. And the stuff is something that is important and that probably I won't be able to discuss about is surface elasticity. The fact is that if we have surfactant and water and an interface, and if I pull at the interface like that, I will dilute the surfactant at the interface if I pull fast enough. And if I dilute the surfactant, then I will have region where the surface tension is high, because I have mainly water, whereas I have region where the surface tension is low, when, when, when I have a lot of surfactant. And this gradient on, in surface tension in the plane of the interface will make that there will be a force at the interface which will take the liquid back. Marangoni effect. So, yes, the fact that you add surfactant lowers the surface tension, and but it's there is kind of second order explanation which is needed. It needs to have gradient of surface tension. If you have no gradient, then you have no stabilization at all. And that's the reason why if you want to make bubbles at home, I will give you a nice recipe tonight, but it will be in French. So, for the, the short version. If you want to make bubbles at home, don't put too much soap. Because if you, if you put too much soap, then you won't be able to create these gradients, and then it, it, it will not make nice foams, yes, or nice bubbles. What is the effect of the gradient? Basically, what I have said is that I have an interface like that, with your factant. And let's imagine that I pull on this interface. If I pull on this interface, I will dilute the, inter the surfactant in the center. And then the surface tension in the area will be larger than the surface tension of this in the, the area. So then there will be a force acting on the interface which will pull the liquid 
and we, which, which will cicatricize the interface to some point. You know, I have pulled on it, and there is a restoring force which pulls the liquid back. Okay, and this is—I mean, this is called the Marangoni effect. And that's really important in order to understand surface stabilization. <sighs> Let's put a liquid on a solid now, because you, you, you already asked a lot of, of questions about what happens if there is a solid. We are kind of obsessed about having a solid. So let's put a solid here. And if, if I put a, 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 a liquid on a solid, I can have a situation where there is a droplet here. And if I want to understand what is the shape of these droplets, I have to t t take into account now that there are three surfaces energy. The liquid air energy, the solid liquid, and the solid gas here. And the classical way of derivating the angle of equilibrium theta here is simply to say, I, proje I project the vertical force here, and if I do that, I get the young dupré law, which relate these three surface tensions, solid gas, solid liquid, and liquid gas, that I often put right only gamma as the interface. My question here is, well, okay, there is an horizontal balance of the forces, but what about the vertical balance of the forces? Gravity. Well, so you mean that um, if I do the experiment backwards, I have a droplet like that. Doesn't work. I mean, I will have the same three forces, and 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 and, and no, gravity will not work. Sorry. Normal reactions of the solid surface. Is that okay? So yeah, exactly. I have two answers which are the, the same. One answer which is reaction of the, s of, of the solid surface or elastic response of the solid surface. And it indeed, that's the same thing. Here, if I want to, to study the equilibrium of, the of this object here, I will say that there is two forces acting on it, his weight, and the, reacting, the reaction of the support. But what is the reaction of the support? It's simply due to the fact that these objects deform the, the lower object, and there is an elastic restoring force, and this, this elastic restoring force is the normal reaction of the support. Two ways of saying the same thing. Elastic response. And how big is the deformation? And the deformation is something that you have already seen. It's the elastocapillary length, and it will be if we take, think in terms of order of magnitude, it will be the surface, the surface energy of the liquid divided by the Young modulus. And for hard substrate with a modulus of 1 gigapascal, the length scale over which the deformation will be done is around uh, 1 nanometer. So it makes sense neglecting the deformation of the, su of the substrate. Whereas for soft surfaces like gels, it can, be from from it can go up to 70 microns for, for, for a gel of one ma a kilopascal. And of course, you, you can measure it. Yes? <laughs> yes, exactly. You're right. I mean, here I'm just, I mean, I'm just trying to, to have an idea of the order of magnitude of the deformation, so I imagine that the deformation is only in this direction. But as an example, if I go like um, in these experiments that you have already, already seen by Park, well, if I really look at what will happen at the triple line, then I will have to do proper projection of the, the all the forces and so on, as so you're right. But it's, it was just to say that it's, it's, it's an important fact. Well, something that we haven't discussed so far and I want to emphasize a little bit is, okay, here, here there is a, this equation that you have seen many, several times in your life with three surface tension. How can you verify this equation? Yes. 
Yeah. You, 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 you change the liquid, you change the solid, you measure the surface tension, and you get it. Well, yes. The point is, how do you measure the surface energy of a solid? How do you do that? And that's really embarrassing, because we are really using this, equ this equation all the time, and you cannot verify this equation. Well, indeed, there have been some tries. Yes? Exactly. That's the, that's the point. Well, there have been some attempts. I just recall you these nice measurements by Mano, Chaudhuri, and, and, and George Whiteside. And basically, what they have done is to use a GKR test. And what they have done is, Matteo Cicotti already explains you this test in detail. So what you do is basically, you take PDMS, a PDMS sphere that you put in contact with PDMS. And using the GKR test, it can give you the surface energy, so the energy you have to create the contact between PDMS and PDMS in air. You can do the same experiment within a liquid. So you can, do, you can calculate the energy to create a PDMS-PDMS contact in liquid. And then you can put droplets of liquid on PDMS and measure the contact angle. And you can measure the surface, the, the, the surface tension of your liquid by using the classical techniques you have in your labs to measure surface tension of liquid. So you can use here nicely a setup to measure the surface tension of solids and use the, the, the setup to, to measure the surface tension of liquids, and then you will have everything. And why is that possible only in this case and not in the other case? That's possible here because we are dealing with soft surfaces. So we are, using, we are able to clearly make surfaces which are perfectly, perfectly, perfectly smooth and to use this GKR test in order to make the measurements. But if you want to measure, I don't know, the still steel surface energy, it will be really hard. And of course, that's an important idea. The way you measure a, a, a surface energy for a liquid is you take a liquid basically and you stretch, you stretch it either with a, with, with a ring or with any technique. So you deform the, you deform the liquid and you, you see what is the energy change and so what the force which is requested that gives you the, the, the liquid surface tension. But with a solid, if you stretch the interface, you also stretch the bulk. And, ba and, and usually you measure only the young modulus of materials or worse. So th that's only in this really particular case that, you, that people were able to measure the solid, the, to test the, the young Laplace load. So that's annoying because in your labs you need, you need surface energies. And I'm sure that you are doing that all the time in your lab. So there are still some techniques. And I will skip that, but I, I just want to, to remember the some techniques that you use in your, in your labs if, if you try to characterize the surface energy of, of solid surfaces. So some of you will use the Zisman plot. So the Zisman plot is the idea that you will plot a series of liquids on a solid surface. And if you, s if you go from high surface energy of the liquid to low surface energy of the liquid, usually what you will see is you will see that there is a transition for a finite wetting to a perfect wetting. And you will say that the critical, con the critical surface energy of your surface is the intercept between this straight line and this horizontal line. And if you assume using the young duplay equation that the solid liquid surface tension is much lower than the solid gas surface tension, then this critical surface tension is the, 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 the solid va vapor free energy. Well, here you have a case which, where it works pretty well. Okay, so that's a technique that you use. I just I should also mention that it's kind of a, a very naive way of understanding the surface energy of solids, and there have been more uh, sophisticated techniques, and I just want to mention it. And as an example, there is this Owen-Swen technique where, where the idea is to try 
to separate in the surface tension of liquids and solids the component in the interaction energies which are polar and, 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 and non-polar. And there is kind there is a bunch of uh, there, there is a trick to to, to, to try to, to, to do that. And if you use this trick, you are you will be able to measure the, the polar and apolar component of the surface energy of your solids. And that's something that people do. I show you just, just this curve. So the idea is that you will take a series of liquids which, are, which have been characterized, characterized, and people know what is the polar and apolar part of the surface energy. And using that, and using several liquids, they are able to, to, to find the, the polar and apolar component of the surface energy of the solid surface. So that's something which is really used in the lab. Here again, that's a, that's a case where it works really well. You have one, two, you have seven, seven points. But if you do that in, the, in, in your lab, I really encourage you to take more than two liquids, despite the fact that with two points, you should have a line. Because usually it doesn't work like that. It is never like that. So really, if you measure surface energy of solid li li using the Owen Swen techniques, be careful, of, be, of, be careful of what you measure. And just to, to, to mention it a little bit, why do we have to be careful when we measure contact angles? We have to be careful with contact angle just nothing happens. See. Here is a syringe. Here is a drop. And here you inflate the drop. And when you inflate the drop, what you see is that the drop inflated up to a contact angle which is called the advancing contact angle. And when we, if you pull the liquid, then the triple line will be pinned up the triple line, reach the receding contact angle and move. In any of the equations I've shown before, there was an hysteresis. All what I have said, either in the Jung Dupre equation, the Owens Wentz equation, the Zisman plot, there should be only one contact angle. And in reality, there are a bunch of contact angles that can be measured. Which means that if you, if you want to measure a contact angle in your lab, you have to have an idea of what is the hysteresis of your contact angle at least. You cannot say that, well, my setup gives me the contact angle. It doesn't exist. The contact angle really depends on the way you have prepared your droplets. And then the contact angle, if the, if the contact angle depends on the way you have prepared your droplets, it means that all the equations that you are using in order to get an idea of the surface energy are wrong. Okay, I think that I have to stop here. Um, so, that's okay. Um, what, what, are, what are the take home message? Well, First of all, wetting properties are really sensitive to small details on the surface. As you see, hysteresis is always air, except in very special cases. So be careful of that. Well, take, 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 take care of that when you, when we, we go, you go with a, a complete, completed model. And then there are some stuff that I could discuss a little bit at the beginning of my talk next time, which is, is there a link between contact angle measurements that we, that we do all the time in our labs, and adhesion. Because often you want to change the surface energy of your solids in order to promote or decrease adhesion. So is, is there any, any links between these two quantities? So let's discuss that later time, and thanks a lot for your attention.